um, I was back to three times a day. Mm -hmm. So from 15 to three. And um, now, <laughs> pretty much, I mean, I don't think that I don't have any disease. Mm -hmm. I really don't have any disease. That's what I feel. And yeah. why I'm able to say that? Because I'm not waking up at night. I am not have to constantly see after wiping that we have blood. Um, I am actually back to more than I've ever been ever weighed myself, which is I'm at one. I actually weighed myself today. I'm at 162. I've never been 162 my whole life. Amazing. So it, uh, my workouts are are getting better. I'm I've, my PRs are in the gym. I'm actually never lifted as much weight anymore. So Amazing. my confidence is out the out the roof. Um, my sleep is better. Um, so I mean, I'm going for a colonoscopy after a couple of months to show the doctor that, hey, I don't have this disease anymore. So I'm confident I don't. And that is, that is the thing is that working with you, it was not just about the diet, but um, more about the holistic view. Actually, yesterday I had goat curry, spicy goat curry. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I, I, I think about five months ago, I thought that I would be able, never be able to eat Indian food again. Yeah. And right now I am eating anything and everything. To kick things off, um, if you could maybe just give like a little bit of background on yourself um, and your diagnosis. Yes. So about a uh, year in, back into 2020 in July, um, I had uh, uh, I took this antibiotics, and from this antibiotic, I uh, started to have uh, issues with with my bowel movements. And once I finally went to the doctor, um, they diagnosed uh, me with a C. diff infection. And uh, from the C. diff infection, uh, slowly, slowly, um, also I, I contracted uh, H. pylori. And I do not know how did that happen, but somehow these two infections uh, took over my whole life, pretty much. Um, they, they've provided me a lot of antibiotics, uh, which is the hardest antibiotic available in the market. Uh, that's the only way that uh, C. diff will be able to uh, be uh, killed from my system, but uh, which did not um, unfortunately happen. I was on antibiotics for five months at wow. this point. Uh, and about for five months, uh, my weight at that time, um, as you have seen me at the gym, I, I was at that point in back in J July um, 2020, I was at um, 150. That was my, my weight at that time. And um, after I was diagnosed with C. diff and I was going to the bathroom about um, 15 to 20 times a day, um, it, that was the most horrific experience I've been through um, for the last uh, year and a half. So after I was diagnosed with C. diff and H. pylori, uh, antibiotics could not actually fix my issues. So I was just becoming more and more uh, weak. I was not eating, uh, always uh, in the back of my head that uh, this disease is going to eventually kill me. So um, the doctors at that time, because in COVID, uh, this was more of an elective procedure for them to actually look at my health. It was not a highest priority for, for the healthcare industry. So I was kind of getting depressed because I was not able to get a doctor's appointment. I'm here going to the bathroom 20 times a day. I'm blood everywhere. Uh, scary situation. Um, I actually took off uh, almost uh, 20 days from work. And I was uh, going to give, um, going to go and give this company uh, about uh, being a disabled person. 
So <laughs> even though uh, I don't have any disability, it, it put me to, uh, to that level of, of the same kind of being a disabled person. So I was kind of getting depressed and, and really losing hope on what's going to happen to me. So um, they were not able to cure it, like I was mentioning through, through antibiotics. So the final draw was that they need to do a colonoscopy and, um, and fix the C. diff infection. So mind you, at this point, uh, ulcerative colitis did not even to come into co uh, in, in, in con consideration um, on, on ulcerative colitis at all. This, this diagnosis for colonoscopy was to actually do a stool transplant. So I had to uh, go to the last resort is, is getting the stool transplant done. Uh, that way they can actually do some um, uh, restoration of the gut microbiome through the stool transplant. Um, so after I got the stool transplant, and that is when uh, the doctors came back and told me that I have two issues that's going on. One is the H. pylori has uh, created ulcers throughout my whole stomach. Um, C. diff was uh, negative after two months of the stool transplant. But the H. pylori, the damage that has been done for five, six months because the antibiotic didn't work, um, my health deteriorated and also the stomach, that pretty much it destroyed my whole stomach mucosa. So um, on top of that, I was also informed that I had esophagus cancer. Um, within the same diagnosis. So it was a blessing and a curse at the same time um, that I was diagnosed with, with ulcerative colitis, but at the same time, I was diagnosed with the horrific, uh, <laughs> anybody can get the horrific news of having cancer. And um, so I went through some cancer treatments. They were able to uh, go through some laser therapy and such to get rid of the cancer cells. But at the end, what I was left with, with was a stomach full of uh, ulcers. And um, I think I've sent you the, uh, the, the images or not, but I will send it to you. Um, but it was pretty horrific. Um, after even uh, getting back from the stool transplant and uh, uh, getting rid of the C. diff and getting rid of the H. pylori eventually, uh, I was still going to the bathroom about, about 15 times a day. So that's when I met you, um, you know, and that's when our journey uh, started mm -hmm. pretty much. And this is uh, where I am right now. Yeah, dude, wow. Um... I mean, I, I work with uh, with quite a few clients, and there's going to probably going to be quite a few people interested watching this because a lot of the inquiries um, that get made with me and a lot of my uh, existing clients, potential clients, um, you know, come from a sort of similar um, ish background. Some of them specifically with C diff, um, and some of them not necessarily, you know, with C diff and H pylori, but some degree of like microbial imbalance is oftentimes what drives the onsets um, of UC symptoms and of that disease slash diagnosis. So I actually had a similar-ish um, situation. Um, I didn't have a C. diff, but I um, got a Campylobacter um, infection years ago, um, which um, set off like a cascade of internal events um like my uh gut was ravaged i ended up um severely ulcerated and bleeding um and so yeah like an infection was the onset of kind of my uh diagnostic story as well um out of interest dude like when you were going through this like you know before you and i started working together um what were you doing diet wise like was there anything that you were trying diet wise to try and resolve it so the doctor pretty much sent me home with mesalamine and told me that there will be uh, no problem. You can have whatever you want um, and just uh, make sure you take mesalamine uh, for the rest of your life. Yeah. 
And uh, I don't think that doctor's advice worked pretty well because I was back in the toilet after <laughs> after um, going and having some pasta. Mm-hmm. So um, I I thought that hey you know what um, I went back to the doctor after a month. I'm like hey you know I'm still going to the bathroom. There is still um, blood. He's like well what did you do? I'm like hey I just had some 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 you know pasta and then also I went out um, for for being able to actually beat. Uh, uh, cancer so i went out for a drink <laughs> and after that i was back in the toilet for for uh, the next um 20 30, 20 times and he's like well uh, this is uncurable um you just have to have to live with it for the rest of your life and it, you just relapsed mm-hmm. so in order to have the relapse you just have to make sure that uh, you take the mesalamine and um you just have to, uh, pretty much the doctor said that I just have to accept that this is, will be with me for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And it really broke me because um, I have always been one of those guys um, where uh, health was number one priority because my mom, she had passed away from colon cancer. Um, so that taught me that health should be someone's priority. Um, and I have never been in the situation to where I used to eat bad food. I was never into a bad diet. Um, so it was, it was amazing that the, the, uh, American, uh, medical society, uh, they are very eager to put a bandit, but not cured the the actual uh the root cause mm-hmm. so i was just pretty much sent home that hey eat whatever you can yeah we do not know what's going to happen you just keep on doing mesalamine and yeah we will see you next time i mean to, to to say that these things do not have their roots in diet and lifestyle is phenomenal um you you, you know all that they, or that at least they can be severely uh, affected by diet and lifestyle is crazy the fact that doctors are still saying that I find wild. Um, and also doctors saying that, you know, there's nothing you can do. You're, you're just going to have to go through this endless cycle of remission and flares. Like that's a really sad story. They're basically saying, listen, this is going to be the rest of your life. You can take these pills and you can hopefully limit the number of um, flares you go through. But ultimately this is going to be your existence and your you know chances of getting sick in the future are going to go right the way up. Um, <clears throat> And because people these days hold doctors or, you know, at least traditionally have held doctors in such high esteem. Um, and I think a lot of doctors should be held in high esteem, right? Like doctors have saved my life. Doctors have saved your life. Doctors have saved many people's lives. I'm not saying let's be, you know, anti uh, Western medicine, but I think we also need to recognize um, the shortfalls of it. You know, like I, I think there's a hell of a lot um, that we can do diet and lifestyle wise. And you're, and you're a living proof of that. Um, that the medical profession seems to be unaware of, and I think that's pretty sad. Um, but yeah, dude. So, um, uh, so you and I started. Um, I mean, how long ago did we start working together? Now, um, what was the what was the date? Did, do you remember what, which which month it was? It was um, so after in in October, I think October of uh, twenty twenty. October of twenty twenty. Okay. And then, and then we worked together up until, um, what was it? Almost a, yeah, almost uh, 10 months. Okay, okay. Um, so, oh, I mean, after the doctor told me that, hey, we can't do anything else, I just went through a full-blown research because mm-hmm. it, uh, it, it was very hard for me to take, take a loss, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to my own health. Yeah. So I will do anything in the world to to be able to, within my power, monetary or um, knowledge-wise, to go there and find answers or somebody else that has been there, done that, um, yeah. that can help me. So that's how I came across you, actually, through uh, the YouTube research. I, I researched uh, a lot on YouTube. And finally, I, I thought that you would be one of the person that can really 
give me some hope because <laughs> at that time I was losing hope of life. Yeah, 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 dude. It's 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 it can be a very lonely place to be. Um, you know, like uh, whilst IBD affects like three million or so people in the U.S., like you don't know those three million other people, right? right. Like it's uh, it's it's a pretty lonely place to be. Uh, generally speaking, you're the only person like in your friend group or social group or family who's yeah. had kind of that experience, and there's not really that much real empathy. Therefore, that you can get from a lot of people. There's not really that many people that share your pain or anything. Um, but, um, all right, dude. Yeah. So can you maybe just talk a little bit, um, about, um, I guess, you know, what we did on the program or sort of, um, what happens, um, when you and I started working together? Yeah. So, I mean, you came up with, uh, with a plan on pretty much cut, cutting out, you know, most of the fiber rich foods. Um, the concentration was slowly introducing, um, the, you know, the vegetables, and such, but um, meat was the number one on the menu. Mm -hmm. So I, I think when I started working with you, after going through the cancer and stuff, I was at 150. When I started working with you, um, I was at 125. Yeah. So that is when um, I have lost almost uh, 25 pounds um, of body weight. And I'm, I'm usually a, a pretty slender guy. So when I lose weight, it's actually I'm not losing any fat. I lost all my muscles that I've built for the last three to four years of okay. hard work. Dude, so, as, uh, as someone who loves going to the gym, I understand how painful that would be. Um, I, I remember, so my last flare, um, which is a while ago now, but... Um, I remember, I think, I, I think I was, I was probably like 205 at one point. Like I'm quite a tall guy, quite wide. Um, and I, I was like 205, but I went down to less than 170. So I, I lost, um, whatever that is. I lost like 35, 40 pounds or something, which is, it's, is a, a wild amount of weight. And I definitely understand the impact that has on like, you know, your confidence, you're getting, um, you know, comments from friends and family members who are not necessarily trying to be rude or anything. It's just difficult to listen to the whole time when you're looking at no, your I, camera. I am a very outgoing guy, <laughs> but um, I did not, I did not actually go out anywhere for six months. Yeah. It's hard, I was, I was uh, locked up pretty much in my room. I was, uh, again, getting depressed that even though I've beat cancer, but this is like more of uh, a torture. And um, I, I, when I came across you, you have pretty much laid out the, the diet every week, you know, adjusting small things. And not only that, but also, as you have recommended, a meditation, introducing other things rather than, than diet, but uh, making sure the stress levels and such. Are being being maintained because that yeah. does trigger a flare, and I have yeah. um, I have uh, picked up you know a book that you recommended, um, and I used to have this on a uh, pretty much I become much more with going through all sorts of flares have not just showed me the the gratitude towards life but also. It has become. It has made me so disciplined now that it just become. It just became a way of life right now for me. Yeah. So I am much more disciplined. Um, definitely, diet helped. Uh, also, um, you know, fermented vegetables um, helped. Um, and also, uh, slowly at the at the very uh, after like six six months working with you. I started to gain back my my size um, when I felt like after after I think working with you after three months I was able to slowly go get back to the gym. Um, definitely, uh, swimming helped a lot uh, because it it kind of started the lymphatic system and such. Um, but also the working out things started to taper off that. I'm not going to the bathroom as much. Um, when we started, it was 15 times a day. And after, um, I was back to three times a day. Mm -hmm. 
So from 15 to three, and um, now <laughs> pretty much, I mean, I don't think that I, I don't have any disease. Mm -hmm. I really don't have any disease. That's what I feel. And yeah. why I'm able to say that because I'm not waking up at night. I am not have to constantly see after wiping that we have blood. Um, I am actually back to more than I've ever been ever weighed myself, which is I'm at one. I actually weighed myself today. I'm at 162. I've never been 162 my whole life. Amazing. So uh, my workouts are are getting better. I'm I, my PRs are in the gym. I'm actually never lifted as much weight anymore. So Amazing. my confidence is out the out the roof. Um, my sleep is better. Um, so I mean, I'm going for a colonoscopy after a couple of months to show the doctor that, Hey, I don't have this disease anymore. So I'm confident I don't. And that is, that is the thing is that working with you, it was not just about the diet, but, um, more about the holistic view. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, um, you know, uh, there's definitely a lot that causes inflammation. Um, obviously, you know, the infections um, that you got were, you know, a driving factor, I guess, in the initial source of your inflammation. Diet can be a source of inflammation. Um, but importantly, lifestyle can be a source of inflammation, right? Like if you're chronically stressed, that's a very inflamed way to live. Like I think a lot of people need to look at different areas of their life if they're trying to solve why they're inflamed. You know, like, like are, are they in a toxic relationship? Are they in like a toxic work environment? Are they in a toxic uh, social group? Um, is their home environment setting them up for success? Um, I think there's a whole bunch of things that we need to look at. So like you mentioned meditation. Um, yeah, I think some of these like self-care practices are supremely valuable and I think they can help you bring your uh, stress hormones back down to baseline. At the same time, people should be looking at this bigger picture stuff. So the area of relationships, career, spirituality, exercise, home environment, finances. Um, these are all like substantial causes of, of stress. Um, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, from the diet perspective, I mean, it, um, right now, I'm still on high protein, very low carb diet. And... Um, Actually, yesterday I had goat curry, spicy goat curry. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I, I, I think about five months ago, I thought that I would be able, never be able to eat Indian food again. Yeah. And right now I am eating anything and everything. But still today, I avoid fast food. I avoid any kind of processed, highly processed food. But um, the other day, I haven't had Chick-fil-A in about a year. And I went and had <laughs> spicy chicken Chick-fil-A number two with a big fries and a Coke. That was, that was my cheat, one of my cheat meals. Yeah. And it's, so, it's, impor it's important that you say that, right? Like it's a, it's a cheat meal, right? I, I think um, uh, a, a lot of people uh, will, go, will go on this journey and they'll almost crave getting back to you know, a certain way of um, living and eating, which isn't necessarily the right thing to do, right? Like, I, I think a lot of people uh, come from, um, maybe this is not your scenario, but like a lot of people come from the scenario where they were just eating, you know, bad food the whole time. And they'll crave getting back to the life that they once lived, even though the life that they once lived is the reason they ended up in this in this spot. So, That's correct. you know, you, you, you saying, um, that it's a cheat meal is a very important thing. Like, like one of the things that I like my clients to kind of, um, I guess, learn and then habitualize over the course of um, working with me, but then also beyond working with me, is that it really is about staying balanced. Like you do not need to have the perfect diet 24 seven. You do not need to have zero stress in your relationship. You do not need to have zero stress in your career. You do not need to have zero stress in your family environment, et cetera. Um, but on balance, you've got to make sure things are in a good spot. So with your diet, yeah, cheat sometimes. Your body's going to forgive you. In your life, yeah, go through like the usual work and relationship stresses. Your body's going to forgive you. 
but on balance, you need to get things right. And I think that's where this kind of 80-20 rule comes from. Um, and it's a very important factor. I think if you can get stuff right on balance, if you can get stuff right most of the time in diet and lifestyle, then that 20% is not going to mess you up. Um, what you want to avoid is going down that kind of slippery slope where you know, you go and you have this uh, Chick-fil-A on, let's call it Thursday, and you think, oh, well, I it didn't mess me up. So on Friday and Saturday, I'm going to do it as well. <laughs> no, <I can't laughs> That's the that. dangerous game. Right. And, and that's the thing is, like I was mentioning, it's not just about the the diet right so like working with you and right now i have i have a, a disciplined regimen so every morning i have a certain amount a certain time i wake up and uh, you know i drink water as soon as i wake up i drink water a whole bottle of water i meditate for five minutes try to bring my my um uh, stress and and kind of feel my breathing mm -hmm. and uh, always I, I listen to my to my gut <laughs> you know if my if my gut is is not acting uh, right I, I will feel hey there's something something going on so um, I've built out a whole resume it to to really focus on my my health and it is at the end of the day it is over overall um, the lifestyle so the lifestyle that I'm in right now, this is the lifestyle that I've built the last six months is going to is set me up for the, for the next 20, 30 years. Big time. Absolutely. 